Welcome back, you guys. Today we are going to be taking a look at the CC power pin effect to squish and stretch. We are going to be squishing and stretching. <laughs> oh boy. Today we are going to be having some fun with the CC power pin effect. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is type out our text. Go ahead and grab your type tool from the toolbar or you can hit command T. Let's go ahead and type out stretch. And then we want to duplicate that with command D. Double click in the text to retype that. And we're going to type and squish. Hit command enter to lock that in. This space is a little big, so I'm just going to double click, highlight that space. And I'm going to take this down something like that. Just to keep things a little organized, let's click and drag that layer down underneath. All right, so now we have our stretch and squish layers. Select the top layer, and then we're going to hit Command-Shift-C to pre-compose, and we're going to call that stretch. And then we're going to do the same thing for the bottom layer, so Command-Shift-C to pre-compose, and that's going to be squish. Double-click on that stretch layer, and we're, we want to crop this down to size. So hit this region of interest, and we're going to click and drag a box like that. And then under composition, we're going to crop comp to region of interest. And that's going to resize the composition. Go ahead and go back in your main composition. Double click on that squish composition. And then we're going to do the same thing here. So click on this region of interest. And then composition and crop comp to region of interest. Now that we have them on there, let's go into our effects panel. Oop, our effects panel and search for CC power pin. Click and drag that onto our top layer and click and drag that onto our bottom layer. Toggle the effects down and then same thing for this one. And give ourselves a little bit more room, so let's drag that up. We want to pair the top left and the top right to the bottom left and the bottom right of the stretch layer. Hold down Option and click on that stopwatch to activate your expressions. And then click and drag. This is top left. We want it to be paired with bottom left. And then we're going to do the same thing with top right. Hit down option. Click that stopwatch. And then click and drag to bottom right. Now what this is going to do is going to stretch and squish that layer. The effect is working like it should be. It just looks a little weird right now. So let's go ahead and refine that. So I'm going to grab my top left and bring that up to the top corner there. And then I'm also going to do that with my top right, bring it up to the corner. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the squish layer. I'm going to grab the bottom left and the bottom right and take those down to the corners. Just like so. And then bottom left, I'm going to bring that down to the corner. All right. So now that we have that set in there, we want to start this off by animating the bottom left and the bottom right of the stretch layer. And we're only going to animate these two because we don't need to animate the top ones. We want to make those stick to where they're at. And same thing with the bottom corners. We just want to animate this point here and this point here. So let's go ahead and hit our keyframe. Let's bring this all the way up to about there. And then the bottom right, we're going to bring down to something like that. It looks a little funky because what it's doing is stretching it out and keeping this proportionate to that vanishing point. Go to perspective and take that down to 0% and that'll deactivate that, that vanishing point. And so we want to do the same thing with the squish layer. Select that and take it down to zero. Now that we have our starting point, let's go to about one second in and then we're going to animate this down to here and we're going to animate this. So we're basically going to just flip flop them and then we're going to hold that for half a second. Actually, let's hold that for, let's make that animate in half a second, and then we're going to make it hold for about a second. So copy that, paste it there, and then we're going to go back to original, to the original keyframes. So half a second later, paste that in there. And then about a second in, we're going to hold that. So copy and paste that. And then we're going to make it go to about half a second. And then I want to bring the bottom left, and I just want to bring it down to where it's even in the middle. So about 240, I'm just going to type it in. And then I'm also going to do that to the bottom right. So 240, and that's going to bring it horizontal. And I want to hold that frame for about a second. So copy and paste. 
And then half a second later, I want this bottom left to go all the way up to about negative 140, negative 140. And then I'm also going to do that with the right. So negative 140. And then I'm going to hold that. So copy that for about a second, paste it. And then half a second later, I'm going to bring that down. Let's call it 615. And then I'm also going to do that for the bottom right, 615. So now you can kind of see what this animation is doing. So select every other set of keyframe. And we're going to hit F9 for easy ease. With those keyframes selected, go into your graph editor. And then we're going to click and drag the handle. Because we want the animation to go fast and then slow down into the, into position. And now what we have is this. I'm going to grab all my keyframes and then with the last one, I'm going to hold down the option and then click and drag. This is going to shorten the animation or I can vice versa. I can extend the animation out and it'll keep it proportional. I'm just going to slow it down just a little bit to about five seconds instead of six and a half. When this animation begins, I actually want to reveal our text. So double click on the stretch layer. And here at half a second, I want to toggle the effects down. Under the animate arrow, we're going to select the position parameter. So we want the text to be start from the bottom. So let's go ahead and move that down to about there. And then under range selector, we're going to click keyframe on the offset. And we want this to end at 100%. And then we want to start at negative 100%. And then under the advanced, let's go ahead and toggle the advanced down and then select ramp up. Let's type in 25 for ease high and ease low, we're gonna do 100%. Now this is gonna animate in and stay there. And then we also wanna do that for our squish. So same thing here, toggle this down, go to your animate parameters, let's add the position. This one we wanna do the opposite, we wanna reveal from up and then bring that down. Toggle down the range selector and then under offset, you want to hit a keyframe there. And then we're going to make this 100%. Go back to the beginning of the animation. And then we're going to do negative 100%. Under the advanced options, let's choose ramp up. And same thing here, 25% for ease high and 100% for ease low. And then this is going to animate the, the animation in. That looks great. Let's go back to our composition here. And you'll see this cool reveal here. It's almost like they're getting stretched into position. Okay, let's grab every other keyframe here. I just want to speed up the animation just a little bit. There we go. I just want to speed this up just ever so slightly. And let's take a look here. Let's go ahead and right click down here in your layers. And then we're going to add a new solid. Let's just call this BG for background. Under your effects and presets, let's go ahead and look for the gradient ramp. And then let's drag that on. We want to change this over to a radio ramp. Under the end color, let's go ahead and do a dark blue. And then under the start color, let's change that to a lighter blue. Something like that. Click and drag the middle of the gradient down to there and then the outer gradient. Click and drag your background and let's put it at the bottom of the composition. That text is now getting a little lost. So let's add one more effect here called a fill and let's bring that on and then let's make this white. Click OK, copy that effect, select your bottom layer, the squish layer and then paste that onto it. And then let's hit spacebar to preview the animation. We just gonna animate this text out. So double click on your composition and we want the animation to end at about five seconds, five and a half seconds. So we're just gonna copy these keyframes here and paste them and then we're just gonna right click on them and then go down to keyframe assistant and then time reverse keyframes. That's gonna reverse those keyframes and now you have an animate in and an animate out. Let's go back into the squish layer and we're gonna do the same thing. Copy those and paste them, right click on them, go down to keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. And then let's just push those in just a little bit. And now go back to your main composition, push space bar, and you'll see they go away.
One last thing before we go, let's go ahead and activate the motion blur. And we're actually going to have to go back in here and activate the motion blur for the squish and the stretch layers, and then go back to our composition. And let's just make sure that's working. And there you go, you guys. That was kind of a quick tutorial showing the power of the power, showing the power of the power pin. Super useful effect. Hopefully you guys can see the potential. I'd love to see what you guys are doing with it. If you like what you see, like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. And until next time, this is Julio, your motion sidekick, here to help you out on your motion side quest. Love you guys. Peace out.